TikTok is still under fire as a senator says the app's CEO should be investigated by the Department of Justice. I'm Rosemary Miller here with Alexandra Levin, a senior writer here at Forbes. Thank you so much for joining me, Alexandra. Thanks for having me, Rosemary. So could you just bring us up to speed on how we got to this point? Absolutely. So there has been a lot of discussion, especially over the last year, about how TikTok handles uh, the data of American users of the platform. So some of the biggest concerns that people have about Americans' data is that there are concerns that Americans' information could be used uh, to potentially manipulate American opinion on anything from the kinds of dances that we could be doing to elections. There's also a lot of concern that Americans' data could be gathered through the app to surveil people or to watch people. And in fact, uh, at some point late last year, there was actually a Forbes journalist, my colleague Emily Baker White, who uh, it, it was it was discovered that TikTok was actually using her location data to try to track where she was relative to other by dance and TikTok employees, people working at the company, so that the company could try to determine uh, who was leaking information from the company to, to Forbes. Um, and that resulted in the firing of those people. So the concern is really, like I said, that the platform could be used to manipulate opinion or that it could be used on a much broader scale to, to, to watch people or monitor, monitor them for any number of reasons, the way that it was done with my colleague. Now, that hasn't happened yet to our knowledge at scale, but that is sort of the uh, the backdrop that explains why there is so much concern, um, especially into this year, about what the company is doing with Americans' data. Um, how we got here, uh, or, or the, the most recent development, I think, is um, in March of 2023, the TikTok CEO, Sho Chu, testified before Congress for the first time. There were a lot of questions asked of him by lawmakers um, about, you know, everything from dangerous trends on the platform to, of course, how the company is handling data. And uh, since that time, we have come out with a number of investigations, including the one I'm here to talk about today, that have shed light on um, you know, more, more things that people perhaps may not have realized about how their data is moving and being handled by the company. Okay, so let's talk about this investigation. I did speak to Emily. That's really scary that they're tracking her location. But if I'm not mistaken, the CEO said that Americans' data was not in China, right? And now he's saying that the data is in China. Is that what's going on? So there's a big, there was a lot of discussion um, at the hearing recently in March about access of data and storage of data. Access means can employees here or can employees in China actually access the data? Meaning, can they look at it? Can they use it to do for, to perform any number of tasks? Could they, if they wanted to, take it and use it for something that perhaps is not part of their job? Those are all questions about access. Storage is where is the data physically, you know, physically being housed? And what the TikTok CEO has said repeatedly, and the company has said repeatedly, is that. Um, on the access question that yes, because TikTok is a global company and in order to enable it to operate globally, there need to be there, there needs to be access to employees all around the world, including in China, um, to, to be able to keep the company up and running. But with storage, the, the, the line that the CEO had said multiple times at the hearing was that the data is actually stored on physical servers that are in the US in Virginia and in Singapore. He repeatedly, uh, you know, he repeatedly stated this fact, which emphasized that it was stored outside of China on physical servers. But we found in our investigation, um, which you know was the culmination of many weeks of reporting and a lot of sourcing from different parts of the company and a trove of internal documents, uh, what we found was that uh, American data actually has been stored on physical servers in China. And specifically, it is the data of creators, some of the largest creators on the platform who are part of the TikTok Creator Fund. Uh, the TikTok Creator Fund is a program that many people who are creators on the platform, who, who are basically paid to post content on the platform and are part of its monetization program, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the name of the program that they are part of. So would this be considered perjury? The big question, of course, is has the CEO committed perjury in stating that data had been stored always outside of China when our investigation has found very clear um, and very extensive evidence that it has been, American data has in fact been stored in China. 
Um, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, who is the top Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee, has asked uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland to formally open a Justice Department investigation into those statements. Um, so it remains to be seen whether he did, in fact, perjure himself. But there are certainly, you know, not, now that Marco Rubio has, has drawn attention to this and asking the Justice Department to investigate, there are certainly a, a lot of people, um, a lot of people scrutinizing not only those statements that he made, but many others that were made at the hearing. And uh, it's something that we're definitely watching closely. Well, Alexandra, I hear there's a lot of disagreement going on about how to move forward with TikTok because a ban has its own set of complications. Could you talk about that? Republicans and Democrats are not on the same page as each other about whether the best path forward is a ban. And also Republicans disagree within the party and Democrats disagree within their party about whether a ban is the best path forward. The I think on the surface, the idea is that if there were a ban, the app would just go away in the U.S. What you know, if you if you peel back, peel back that layer, just if you peel that back just a little bit, what you what you actually see is that in other countries where the platform has been banned, such as India, data is still the data of people who were in that country who previously used the platform. It is still sitting with the company. It is still sitting in tools within the company. It is still accessible by employees of the company. And that is actually another story uh, that we reported just around the time of the hearing back in March, that despite the ban in India, everything that was collected up until that point uh, on Indian users is still sitting with the company. And it's not clear how long it's being retained for and, and why it's actually still being retained. So the big question is, if we actually ban the app here, what would happen to all of the data that already exists on Americans that has already been you know, gathered on the roughly 150 million Americans who are using it? Um, there's also major free speech concerns about banning a platform here. There are a lot of people who are making the argument um, on both sides of the aisle that banning a platform here would be no different than a company uh, than a country like China banning social media platforms like Facebook, or Twitter, or any of the other mainstream sites that Americans are using so much in their everyday lives. It'd be no different than you know doing doing that with TikTok here would be sort of no different than China doing it there with American companies. Um, and then the third piece of this is that there is you know, undeniably a huge, um, a huge portion of the American population that relies on this platform for work. There's a lot of small businesses on the platform, a lot of people who feel like their livelihoods uh, have completely changed because of the platform, because the platform, it, it, it enables like instant virality for so many people that could have spent a ton of money trying to advertise on platforms like Facebook for potentially months or years and, and you know, never really saw the light of day with their businesses moving, you know, you know, it never really saw the light of day with uh, those those platforms moving the needle for their businesses and now are very reliant on TikTok. So Democrats and Republicans disagree both between parties and then within their own parties about whether a ban is the best way forward. Here. I mean, you're absolutely right. TikTok is a way to go viral instantly. And have you tried on Instagram lately? It's, it's pretty hard. But um, Montana, they have banned the app. Am I right? They banned it and now TikTok is suing them. Could you tell me about that? Absolutely. So Montana um, is the first state to enact a statewide ban. There's concern that because Montana is doing this, that other states will do the same. However, there are tons of legal hurdles uh, that TikTok is already mounting to challenge this. Um, the free speech one is actually a very, you know, probably the, the, the most obvious concern. But then there's a lot of technical questions about how you'd actually enforce a ban in Montana. Think about people who may, you know, drive, you know, drive in and out of the state as part of their, you know, part of part of their daily jobs, like as part of work. There's a lot of technical questions about how this would actually happen uh, and how uh, Internet service providers and, uh, you know, and, and, and companies that host these apps, like how that would actually work. Um, and mm -hmm. so I think it, it remains to be seen whether Montana can, in fact, sort of be this beacon for all of these other states to follow. But it's looking right now like that is, you know, these are only a couple of the many legal hurdles that any state trying to do this are likely to face. And Alexandra, I did see in your reporting something called Project Texas. What is that? Project Texas, on a very basic level, is a one and a half billion dollar project that TikTok has said it is um, it, it is moving ahead with and has already you know there's already work underway on this um, to basically firewall off Americans' data from China. Uh, the idea is that 
all American data would be stored on servers that are outside China, that there would be strict access controls on that data. And the whole point behind Project Texas is really to kind of calm concerns from regulators and from lawmakers and from the American public that any data that is collected through the app could be, you know, by or accessed by uh, people who are uh, who, people who are based in China. Um, Project Texas, I think, is something that a lot of lawmakers, especially at the hearing back in March, expressed a lot of uh, a lot of criticism and skepticism about. Um, there's one lawmaker who said Project Texas probably cannot work on a technical level the way that you, as a company, have claimed that work because there are just too many back doors. And I think some of the reporting that has come out since the hearing back in March has started to sort of show what those what those issues are and just what a major technical would be for the company to, to do this. One other thing that we've heard, uh, a lot of these staffing Texas has not yet been done, uh, that they are ramping up, but that there are a lot of unfilled positions uh, you know, around that effort. And so that's also something that we will continue to watch. And finally, Alexandra, What's next with this whole investigation on TikTok? I mean, do I need to just go ahead and delete it? Is it done? What's next? I think anything we see happening to the app will not be for many, many months, likely into next year. I think that a lot of momentum, as with all news cycles, a lot of the momentum that you saw uh, really hitting a boiling point around the time of the hearing back in March has dissipated. From what we understand, there is going to be more work later this summer that is... Uh, that that may sort of refocus on some of these issues. Also something to watch overseas is that the uh, the European uh, data watchdog that is uh, overseeing two investigations into TikTok and its data handling practices uh, for Europe. Those two investigations, which have been underway for a very long time, are coming to a close um, or, or, or that there may be an update about them later in the summer. So that's something that is worth watching because whatever happens over there where they do have a privacy law could very much set a precedent or have some sort of a ripple effect in the US, which was which does not have a privacy law. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is that there's no ban imminent uh, because A, there are these legal, these legal hurdles that um, anyone who, any, any state uh, or any um, lawmaker trying to impose a ban, like they are going to face those hurdles, um, you know, kind of in, indefinitely. But the other piece of this is that there's a major presidential election next year and lawmakers are very, very, aware that TikTok is a huge organizing tool. It is also a very, you know, it's very popular with the young voting bloc that is going to be arguably the most important voting bloc for um, for politicians in the 2024 election. And so uh, similar to what we have seen in past elections, I, I think you can expect a lot of hesitation about taking any very aggressive stance on this um, by any of the presidential candidates going into the next year. Um, knowing that of the 150 million Americans who are using the platform, a large number of them are arguably the most important voters for um, for the presidential candidates. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.